A lot of people look at the Metal Gear content on this channel, which is about half the total number of videos, and they make two assumptions. One, they assume this channel is solely about Metal Gear lore. And those people are just idiots, right? So stupid they literally can't count to ten on two hands. They're just beyond saving. The second assumption people make is a lot more innocuous. They assume that I'm a fan of the Metal Gear series. They think I somehow like these games. And I can forgive people for thinking that, because at one point in time, I absolutely did. Actually, that's a massive understatement. A few dozen lifetimes ago, the Metal Gear series was the center of my entire world. And interestingly enough, it was specifically because of my obsession with these games that I decided to pursue certain skills when I was given the opportunity. Ironically, that's exactly what led to my disdain for the Metal Gear series and my ongoing mission to destroy it. So if you thought we made these videos out of love for the Metal Gear series... Love? It's hate! My biggest problem with the Metal Gear series is that the games were just too good at replicating the look and feel of a Hollywood blockbuster. And then they went on to sell millions upon millions of copies, something that publishers across the gaming industry took note of and tried to replicate. As a result, if a game is going to have any chance of succeeding in the AAA space, it needs to look and feel just like a movie. And this created a domino effect that nearly crashed the games industry in Japan during the seventh generation of consoles. That might sound like hyperbole, but it's true. Everything wrong with the gaming industry today can be traced back to 1998 with Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid wasn't anywhere near the first attempt to blur the line between interactivity and cinematography. Interactive movies apparently go all the way back to 1912, and I'm gonna assume most of you are familiar with Dragon's Lair. Then you had FMV games like Night Trap and Phantasmagoria take off in the 90s, a genre that's seen somewhat of a resurgence in the modern day with releases like Her Story and 428 Shibuya Scramble. But the gameplay of these titles, if you can even call it gameplay, boils down to little more than quick time events. I could be wrong, but I feel like the first game that succeeded in giving players an actual game alongside a truly cinematic experience was 1994's Wing Commander 3, starring none other than Luke Skywalker. The success of that series led to another whole-ass fiasco within the game industry known as Star Citizen. Metal Gear Solid did something different than other games before it, though. Instead of live-action FMVs or pre-rendered cutscenes, all of MGS1's cinematics used the same real-time engine as the game, allowing for a seamless transition between gameplay and plot delivery, but they took it too far. Unlike the pre-rendered stuff you saw that required specialized hardware like a silicon graphics machine to make, MGS1's cutscenes were relatively inexpensive to produce, not just in terms of cost but also the amount of space taken up on the disc. Before, high-quality movie scenes had to be used sparingly, reserved for only the most important moments in the game's story. But MGS1 completely changed that dynamic. That game's cutscenes proved you could interrupt the gameplay and deliver plot details whenever you wanted. And then that game went on to be wildly successful, which spawned a huge franchise spanning dozens of sequels and spin-offs. The way any profit-seeking endeavor works is that people will look at what sells and just copy it. Usually that only applies to genres, which is why we have terms like Metroidvania and Souls-like. But publishers saw the success of Metal Gear Solid's cinematic format and decided that that was the best way to tell stories in video games. I take issue with that because I don't know if you noticed, but games aren't movies. They're games. Rank up! Master Sergeant Shooter Sergeant Person! It's an important distinction to make because video games are the only storytelling methods of their kind. Traditional stories like books, comics, and movies are all passive forms of media, meaning the only thing you can do is just sit there as a story is told to you. But video games are stories that you actively participate in, making the narrative a collaboration between you and the creator. If you're making a game and your primary means of conveying the story to the player is a passive method like a cutscene, you're simply not taking advantage of the unique properties of the medium. Oftentimes, as is the case with the Metal Gear series, there's no reason for the gameplay to exist at all. It's just a distraction on the way to the next cutscene. Cinematics definitely have their place in games, but people need to realize that they're just a tool in the developer's arsenal of ways to tell a story. Let me put it like this. Think back to the memories you have of your favorite games. If the most memorable part of a game was anything besides gameplay, if it was something you just sat and watched like a cutscene, then that game succeeded as a movie, but ultimately it failed as a game. Notice how so many AAA games these days are linear experiences that hold your hand the entire way, and your every move is not only plotted out, but you're actually punished for trying to deviate from the path that was laid out for you. Games do this simply because developers don't know how to tell stories in games, so they try to make their gameplay as much like a cutscene as possible. 
They don't want you deviating from the path they've laid out because they can't tell you the passive story they wrote when they can't predict what you're going to do next. This way of doing things is just barely a step above telling a story with cutscenes. In my eyes, it's still a passive experience, so it does absolutely nothing to advance games as an art form. You always hear the fanboys gushing about how hideous Kojakass is such an artistic fucking genius, but his storytelling methods actually force video games to take a massive step backwards on their evolutionary journey. It goes way beyond just sacrificing gameplay for cinematics, though. Every year, publishers and developers feel more and more pressured to deliver cutting-edge graphics using techniques that were lifted directly from the silver screen. Back in the days of the PS2, a development team of 50 people was seen as a lot. These days, though, a AAA game can have upwards of a thousand people working on it, and most of those employees are artists and programmers trying to squeeze as many uncompressed textures into the game as possible. Graphical bells and whistles make for good press and generate hype, but you sacrifice the stability of your game when that's your priority. That's why so many games launch as a buggy, unplayable mess, and it isn't until months after release that the game becomes what it was supposed to be in the first place. Now, I'm not blaming the gaming industry's superficiality when it comes to graphics on Metal Gear Solid. Better graphics always have and always will be something that developers and consumers push for. But I am blaming the Metal Gear series for making people think that the camera in a game should function like a movie camera instead of like a human eyeball. Lens flare has been around for a while, but the fact that film grain and chromatic aberration are even options that exist in so many graphic settings should tell you. Video game graphics evolved in the wrong direction. Any fictional world should strive to immerse the audience, and in a visual medium like a game or a movie, the best way to do that is by making the viewer feel like they're observing the action with their own eyes. But the lens of a movie camera doesn't work as well as a human eye, and that leads to unintentional artifacts like lens flare and chromatic aberration. Despite the fact that these are imperfections that both hinder a game's performance and make the image quality look worse, developers put them in just to make their game look more like a movie. It makes perfect sense in games like Metal Gear that are specifically trying to evoke the feeling of the silver screen. Take Kane and Lynch 2, for example. That game's entire aesthetic is meant to make you feel like somebody's following you around with a shitty camcorder, documenting everything you do. And that game actually looks amazing as a result. So obviously it's fine if a game is doing it on purpose. All I'm saying is that not every game needs to try and look like a found footage movie. Most games, especially ones that feature a first-person view, should look like we're seeing the action with our eyes, as if we're actually there, not like we're watching the events after the fact on TV. Thus far, I spent a lot of time complaining, which means I've been playing a passive role, and that just ain't my style. Now that I've identified the problem, though, the question is, what the fuck am I gonna do about it? As I mentioned at the start, I'm gonna destroy Metal Gear Solid. Not the franchise itself. Konami's doing a good enough job of that on their own. No, my objective is to destroy the movie-obsessed game design ethos that Metal Gear Solid created. In the past, my plan was to take the series down a peg by pointing out how bullshit and nonsensical the story was, and then showing how easy it'd be to fix it if anybody on the writing team knew what the fuck they were doing. My cohorts and I had a good time making those videos, and we had even more fun making all the Kojak-ass fanboys cry. Remind me to tell you about the time we pissed off the entire Metal Gear Solid subreddit. That shit was hilarious. But even I know that's not the best way to go about things. You're never going to change anything by arguing with little kids and stupid people. You change things by making a better product than the competition. Recently, YouTube's been recommending all these I'm making my dream game videos, and that made me think I should jump on the bandwagon. But the thing is, I actually value gameplay in my games, so my dream game doesn't look anything like Metal Gear. Most of the MGS videos on this channel deal with the cutscenes, not the gameplay, so if I did have a hypothetical Metal Gear Dream game, it would technically be a movie. I got a storyline all planned out, too. The patrons know all about that. I do have an actual game in the works, though. It's not my dream game, but it's an RPG that takes a lot of influence from the Metal Gear series, along with other games that are important to me like Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, Persona, Assassin's Creed, the list goes on. In the spirit of initiating change, I decided to change the name of the channel to make it clear that we're fully committed to storytelling in video games. I'll have to explain the meaning behind the name some other time. Some people think I did that to distance myself from Metal Gear, which doesn't make any sense because, again, this channel was never about Metal Gear in the first place. But that series will continue to play an important role in future content. Because as much as I hate to admit it, those games had a major impact on my life. And my death. I'd even go so far as to say they inspired me. In the coming decades, you're going to hear a lot more about exactly how the Metal Gear series inspired all the projects we're working on, so you can look forward to that. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to check out the links in the description.